Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the second day of our Digital Banking Asia 2022 virtual conference. We still have four tracks for you for uh, the second day. And to kick off the first track, which is the self-service solutions track, we have a panel session on what does a self-service customer journey look like and is the human touch still important? So in this panel, we have Indra Hidayatullah, Vice President, Data Management and Analytics Division Head, at Bank Tabungan, Negara. We have John Howard Medina, Chief Operating Officer at Philippine Bank of Communications. We have Selvin Taran Munyandi, Head of Health Quality and Process Improvement at Credit Guarantee Corporation. And our moderator, we have Anurag Mishra, Partner, Financial Services, Technology Consulting at EY Philippines. So over to you, Anurag. Thanks, Jed. Uh, good morning, everyone in Asia. Uh, thanks for joining the session. Uh, you know, it's an interesting topic, and uh, I'm joined by my panelists, who I'll introduce to you shortly. Uh, in fact, uh, before I do, let me give you a context of uh, the topic. The world around us is changing, and uh, today we have a lot more digital interactions um, than ever before. Right, the traditional ways of interactions are changing, and the customers have evolved. So increasingly, technology is playing a bigger part in our role. The customer behavior is changing, competition is much more intense, and business models are also evolving. This calls for looking at the future, and it means essentially designing and delivering services which are differentiated and give customer experiences which delight. Uh, building trust with relationship, uh, with customer relationship, and uh, transforming the entire sales service and marketing function. Right. Uh, all of this in order to drive the business, and this means essentially we now need to look at the entire. Uh, end-to-end customer life cycle. What does it mean to acquire customers? What does it mean to manage the life cycle and expand and retain them? Uh, in today's context, most of you might have experienced more and more customer interactions are being managed without people. The question then arises, how and when are we capturing what customers think of us? What is the experience? What is the moments of truth? what they value, and what is the optimal contact strategy, given that, you know, bots, AI automation is pervasive around us, right? So in today's debate, uh, we will touch upon what does a self-service customer journey look like? Is the human touch relevant? If so, what is the right balance between multi-channel, anytime, anywhere, accessibility versus personable service? And when does it become important for customers and for companies to engage with human touch? Having given you a context, let me take some time to introduce you the panelists. We have with us, I'll start from down south, which is Indonesia. We have with us Indra Hidiatullah, who is essentially a data management and analyst analytics division head for a bank, Tabunga Negara. Uh, this bank is known as the top five bank in terms of assets. And it's a leader of mortgage bank, uh, which has about 40% market share in Indonesia. Indra is responsible for developing, organizing, and storing uh, and analyzing uh, hardware and software strategic assets. He designs, develops, and maintains data warehouses, data stores, customer relationships, and business intelligence systems for the bank. So he has with him close to about 20 years of experience in data analytics, artificial intelligence, business intelligence, information technology, and banking project management. So he brings in an interesting experience, uh, give, especially given the context of uh, evolving technology in uh, the entire customer journey. I move up to Malaysia and uh, we have with us Selvin Theran Muniendi. We'll call him Selvi. Uh, Selvi has worked for about 25 years in various roles uh, in leadership, strategic planning, business analysis, uh, robotic process automation. Uh, he has run Center of Excellence, 
Uh, he himself is a Lean Six Sigma expert, uh, worked a lot with processes, re-engineering, and management consulting and change management. Selvin is currently leading a you know, group-wide process engineering, process automation, and improvement project uh, for, uh, for his current employer. We also have with us uh, John Howard Medina. We'll call him John. John is the Chief Operating Officer of Philippine Bank of Communication with more than 25 years of experience in driving innovation, change, transformation in the financial service space in various countries across the globe. Uh, he was a pioneer digital transformation uh, expert in the late 90s and helped re-engineer the APAC operations of a large multinational bank. He's also worked with various banks uh, in US and in the Philippines. Uh, he's currently uh, in, in Philippine Banking of Communication. And prior to this, he was actually also with Philippines National Bank in various roles. And he has also played a key role in mergers and acquisitions with uh, different roles that he has played in his career. With that, uh, let me call upon uh, uh, my panelist, John. So John, question to you. Uh, let's kickstart this discussion. And let me ask you a question, uh, which I think is important for uh, setting the tone and the context of this discussion. And that is, is human touch relevant in the self-service journey today? And why and when do companies need it? So John, over to you with your thoughts on this topic. Well, we're in the financial services industry. So uh, it's in a unique position where it affects lives, which is why there are very important interactions where human touch is critical, uh, especially from a customer's perspective. I mean, a lot of the transactions have been automated. The self-service uh, component of transactional uh, processing and self-service is there. But when events are, you know, uh, run the gamut from inconvenient to life-changing, a customer uh, can, situation can be distressed by human interaction. I mean, it could be as inconvenient as, you know, your card is not working when you're traveling and you need to have it fixed to... You know, the last two years, access to funds because of, you know, hospitalization or emergencies. Uh, you need that human interaction to give assurances that, you know, an expert is holding you, your hand through this. Uh, it, it's, it's more stressful to do self-service when you're already in a stressful situation uh, than to have somebody holding your hand. And because financial services, you know, our, our relationships are built on trust. Uh, the trust component is strengthened when they feel that a banker uh, is holding their hand in a critical situation. So I think that that still makes customer uh, human interaction very, very important in a self-service journey because you, a customer will always prefer uh, speed and convenience. Uh, and you, know, you will not have that in a human interaction because you, know, you have to explain everything uh, and walk them through it. But at some point, you want to have your hand held, and that's when a customer will will actually initiate a human interaction because they want it done by an expert. Um, and you know, there is a lot of tech out there that will help automate the customer self service journey. But uh, in countries in this region, our dilemma is natural language support uh, for AIs. The artificial intelligence will not support fully. Uh, right, the the recognition of natural language in the local languages and dialects, and that's a that's a that's a big hindrance uh, in terms of you know uh, moving more of the human interactions to uh, automation because whether it's a, a, a direct message or a text, uh, an email, or even voice or video, uh, the natural language support is the is the last battleground to moving us to. Uh, more automation. Thanks, John. I think you you bring about uh, very important aspects of trust, handholding in the journey, and the technology is still rapidly evolving, and there are pockets uh, to fill with all of this. So thanks for your inputs on that. And I move over to Selvin. Uh, Selvin, with your experience, uh, could you 
help us understand how is technology revolutionizing the self service journey by you know architect architecting the entire customer experience and how a company is using all of this yeah um so thanks for the question anra so basically if you look at um customer interaction with any organization for example let's say in the financial industry um you know previously we used to go to atm for us to withdraw money or to do certain transaction and all that and after that any uh, further transaction we we require for us to go to the branch a physical branch for us to do any uh, particular transaction but nowadays if you see there's a lot of um online capability that has been built by a lot of financial uh, organizations where we can do a lot of transaction uh, while sitting at home right we can do pretty much almost every transaction uh seamlessly right so if, even if you um, ask all the panelists or even uh, all the participants uh, that attending to this conference today when was the last time you went to the bank to do any particular transaction most of them would say months ago or even some of them years ago because nowadays we do a lot of transaction uh, over the counter i mean uh, online right so it has become very easy and seamless and that is on uh, doing transaction but let's say for example if you have any issues you have any request or you have any complaints um a lot of organization you know their call center is being manned by a group of people but your initial interaction with the organization is with a um, automated programmed uh, machine right basically you will say okay press 1 for english press 2 for your local language and then after that you press 1 for credit card press 2 for banking you know it is uh, allowing customer to self help themselves in terms of trying to do what they want to do and at the same time for the organization it allows them to narrow down customer uh, request to them so that by the time a human attends to that request or attends to that complaint that particular the right person will be made available to attend to that particular request or complaint so that the interaction between customer and the organization become a bit more seamless become a bit more direct become a bit more um exactly trying to address customer uh, requests so if you see so and 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 if you see technology has helped us especially if you like if you look at the last 2 to 2 to 2 and a half years um you no know, uh, covid has caused a lot of havoc in the um, the whole world so technology has helped us to continue to run our daily lives uh, in terms of what we try to do on a day to day basis thanks uh, salvi i think uh, uh, for me uh, what you brought about uh, building a seamless experience and moving to a faster response is something which technology is helping us uh, deliver and that i believe is very important um, in the entire journey Uh, and and this ties well with what john actually uh, spoke about earlier which is in this entire journey there's still pockets of human interaction and interface which actually um, can bring a superior experience right so thanks for addressing this now if i were to move next uh, uh, and ask you know indra So, you know, how can companies use data to refine and build uh, superior customer interaction? And I I know you come from this background, so it it's it's it'll be useful to get insights on you know how you are going about it in this entire journey. Thank you, Anura, for your question. Uh, can you hear my voice yes Or i can hear you well. breaking here okay uh i will start with uh this one creating a relationship is uh, vital for customer satisfaction of course so uh to create loyal returning customers a business needs to make sure that customers feel valued and listened to right so 
Although digital solutions we, uh, are great at resolving problems, it's quite difficult to create uh, genuine relationships between a brand and its customers without real human interaction. So uh, we can see that uh, nowadays customers continue to demand effortless, efficient user experiences that are available at any time across any device. That's we understand about that. So uh, the result is a, a growing number of technologies such as, uh, for example, speech and natural language solutions. And uh, we try to offering human-like self-service experiences to ensure the highest level of accuracy. So we know from the Gartner, uh, based on uh, Gartner, uh, that uh, by 2025, AI will power around 90, 95% of customer interactions, including live telephone and online conversations. So. Uh, we can say that uh, the data plays a very important role in the customer journey, which one of the ways by providing a self service solution that suits uh, the customer profile, of course. So uh, along with automated self service solutions, uh, life agents, uh, in this case, life agents play an important role uh, in delivering superior customer service in two ways. I can say in two ways. First, uh, life agents as a traditional uh, customer service agents working directly with the customers and then the second one as interpreters and trainers for advanced natural language virtual assistant applications this is one of the data sources that we use to build a uh, superior customer interaction so uh, the involvement of the agent today is more important given the multiple roles that they play so ultimately people you always play a role in providing excellent customer service experiences but this role is evolving as virtual assistant technology adapts to continuously improve the customer's experience uh that's uh, the answer Go, thanks thing. thanks indra and um, uh, for the audience feel free to post your questions for your panelists and we will come to that towards the end of the session um, so feel free uh, with your specific uh, queries and it's a good opportunity to address it with the panelists right so you know i think uh, uh, what i got from uh, uh, what you mentioned is to make uh, technology better to train technology to perform better there's still a big role of human interaction yes to understand your customer better there's still a big role for human interaction and that's not going to go anywhere uh, soon, right? Because we need to be in a position to personalize uh, services to our customers. And technology, while enabling all of this, uh, does not take away this essential element of human interaction. So thanks, uh, thanks, Indra, for this question. Now, if I move over to uh, Selvain, back to you again. Uh, <clears throat> And the question to you is, uh, in what way humans and bots uh, actually are collaborating to engage, delight, and retain customers? Uh, if you can yeah. you know, walk us through the journey uh, for our uh, listeners, it will be an interesting area. Thanks. Uh, yeah, yes. So typically, a lot of organization, what they do is they use um, any simple, easy, or repetitive tasks to be performed by technology, now in this case, a robot or sometimes we use the term bot. And then once it comes to a little bit more human intuition kind of uh, conversation or human intuition kind of interaction, that's when actually human takes over. Right? For example, if you look at uh, chatbot nowadays, so, so whenever you uh, try to interact with any organization, they'll have this chatbot. Previously, what happened is chatbot, you type a certain questions and then sometimes the response that you get may not be exactly what you want or not really responding to your question because previous technology just read what you have typed and then it responds accordingly. But if you look at it, technology has evolved to a, a current situation where it is able to read the intent of the question rather than what the actual question is. So by reading the intent of the question, so the bot is able to respond to those texts almost like a human, right? So again, 
this kind of uh, interaction are more with repetitive or normal or simple kind of request or conversation or interaction. And then when it comes to a, a bit more advanced or a bit more human intuition kind of uh, conversation, that's when a human takes over. So in doing this, what happens is a lot of organizations are able to in interact with multiple customers at the same time, right? At a lower or at a more manageable operational cost and efficiency. So this is what happens in a lot of organizations. They try to marry or they try to merge between uh, chatbot or technology with human when it comes to interacting with the customer. So with this, we are able to provide a more faster and more superior uh, responses uh, to our customer. And uh, in the, in, that is one. And second is by having this, we are able to res respond to customer almost 24 by 7. All right. So uh, now looking at the, because of globalization, a lot of operations, sometimes it is uh, spread over too many uh, geographical locations. So because of this, organizations are able to provide a superior customer experience by having a 24 by uh, 7 operation and interaction with the customers. Thanks, Elvi. And uh, yeah, a lot of us uh, listening to this conversation uh, <clears throat> might have seen uh, the evolution of chatbots over a period of time. And certainly uh, the initial days versus chatbots getting intelligent, much more contextualized understanding the intention of what customers really wanted to address is getting better. It's still a journey, but uh, in that journey, uh, <clears throat> there are a lot of points of intersection where uh, you know the human touch becomes significantly important. At the end of the day, <clears throat> uh, Chatbot is also part of the experience for customers and uh, where the experience gets broken is where uh, the human interaction plays such a critical role. So thanks for uh, you know bringing this out, Selvi. And if I may uh, move to uh, John, over to you. And the key question uh, I have is, uh, what do we, you know, uh, what do we ask before designing a you know self-service customer journey? Uh, how to decide how much of it involves human touch? Uh, I think we have touched upon why is it relevant. But if there are specific instances that uh, you want to bring to the attention of this uh, this thing audience, uh, we'll be happy to hear from you. Your thoughts on this? Well. Um... Recently, we ran a human-centered design uh, training program for our uh, both uh, business leaders, product heads, and customer experience uh, personnel uh, because we wanted to go back to basics. What were the customer requirements beyond voice of the customer? Um, and if you don't approach it from that perspective, meaning what what is it that they need or want in the design? You will miss out on, uh, you know, finding the optimal approach, whether it's human contact or automated self-service. Um, an example that will probably not be evident if you do data analytics is there was a segment of the population, for example, that was always doing regular uh, balance inquiries, um, last five transaction inquiries or uh, account history inquiries on self-service. And so unless you talk to the customer, uh, you would not be able to figure out, for example, that probably three-fourths of those were uh, employees who were checking whether the employers had released their, their salaries or benefits. Um, and so with that insight, then you could now provide additional services, for example, as a direct deposit alert or a push alert that uh, a certain entity was now crediting your account, uh, which was something that they really wanted. And when, they, when you give it to them, they really appreciate it. So uh, the, the human-centered design approach uh, for ideation, I think, has uh, opened the eyes of our people uh, in terms of looking beyond uh, the data, but more about the human aspect of uh, the customer experience. Thanks, John. I think uh, 
very uh, <clears throat> very important angle to this entire discussion uh, in order for us to drive insights and to look for opportunities to drive differentiation from a customer service uh, product offerings perspective uh, i think that's an interesting insight because yes uh, that is a compelling reason for us uh, uh, to look at it so so yeah appreciate this and if i were to you know move over to indra and ask you uh, the next question indra um, how do companies balance the tech enabled uh, self service customer journey with human interaction and is there a secret sauce or a combination that works better for customers because our experience traditionally has been there are actually gaps in the processes and uh, customers uh, sometimes uh, may not be getting the required services and companies might also be wondering uh, what is the right mix and how this combination works perfectly for them okay thank you anura so uh, in our company we have to make sure that uh, our customers should have control over how they complete their transactions so whether it's on the phone online or in branch or combination of all and make it simple and seamless for customers to choose their channel anywhere along the journey will reduce their anxiety of course so but however there is nothing that uh, for for such a customers there is nothing that builds confidence like talking to an expert you know yeah we have found that uh, when looking into complicated purchases around 40% of people prefer prefer to speak with an expert advisor or an agent compared to only 25% who prefer to search online or doing a self service we understand about that and we also learn from uh, some uh, retail industries that uh, around 30 35% of customers up for the human touch of a phone call when their purchase exceeds around 500 US dollars whether it happens over live chat in app video conference or a phone call human interaction cannot be replaced by even the most sophisticated ai for sure but to get this interaction right marketers should uh, create experiences that close sales while building trust so in such cases our company has not forgotten that uh, customers still need a helping hand and because uh, we don't want to uh to take a risk of losing customer by neglecting human connection so we do understand from customer point of view it's comforting just knowing that someone is there if you need them and that they won't bother you if you don't so in this in btn we build some kind of spirit uh, in terms of a uh, connection with uh, the customers we give the customers control but make sure that we be there when they need us so we provide some kind of flexible process for customers and let them do a self service first especially for simple inquiries like uh, john men- uh, mentioned before and by the time the customers start to feel lost we give them the option to continue the process by talking to our agent for example Thank you. Thank you. So I think the key phrase that I took from that is uh, be there when the customer wants us. Yes. So that's 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 a very important part of the design element uh, letting the control of uh, what and when is needed in the hands of the customer uh, and that's where human touch becomes very critical and central to the design. So thank you so much uh, uh, for for elaborating this for our clients uh, for our customers. uh now if i really uh, you know uh, do a little bit of deep dive into uh, you know how does uh, your form in the current role that you are uh, performing uh, how are differentiated and tailored uh, digital experiences built for your clients how is it working uh, how much of this involves the human interaction Uh, design element and how are you addressing all of this if i may just turn over and go to selvi first with this question selvi yeah sure anurag so basically what we try to do is you know, 
uh, whenever we're interacting with the customer, so one of the main things that we do is we, you know, we let's say customer make an application, customer want to open an account, they want to do certain transactions. So typically what we need to do is we need to capture their information as much as we can. Right. And uh, traditionally, what happens is customer will come over and then somebody within the organization will do some data entry, will do some capturing to the system. And then after that, we do the processing. So what we do is we try to capture customer information digitally. And in this case, we get customer to do it themselves yeah, at their own leisure, whether using their laptop or using their phone and all that. So at least half of the work has been done by the customer so then once they submit those information to us we are able to almost immediately start processing those information right so in that sense we are able to provide almost an immediate answer or almost an immediate response to the customer so in order to provide a you know, superior customer experience for them so um, we study all this information trying to understand what are the information that we need to capture and what are the information that we can do ourselves by having our system to interact with the relevant authorities or the relevant relevant um, what you call an endorsement organization so with this so we need to ensure that we study the process clearly so this is what typically we do we spend a lot of time studying the process internally as well as studying the process from the customer perspective right so we put ourselves in the customer shoe and see what the customer go through so that we can provide a seamless experience to the customer so we spend a lot of time doing that thanks Selvi. And John, if I were, if I were to turn over this question over to you, how is um, and how are you doing this uh, uh, entire exercise with the current operations at the bank? Well, uh, we took a conscious decision at the start of this all five years ago uh, to take control in house of the front end customer experience layer. Um, we could have easily, you know, procured an off the shelf. Uh, solution to roll out, for example, the mobile app or the internet banking platform or, or the chatbot uh, uh, that we use. And by deciding to do it, taking full control of it, you know, you can, you can outsource the development easily. But the design, I think, and the ownership, it allowed us to be more reactive to the customer journey uh, and adjust accordingly. Uh, because you know, when when you have control of that layer, that experience layer, uh, it's easy for you to tweak it uh, midstream. So an example is, uh, you know, we, we did have self onboarding prior to the pandemic, but at the onset of the pandemic, we activated this service called PB to Go, which was in effect a, a retail concierge service, meaning uh, what you could not find on the app. Uh, as a service, you could ask the chat, the bot concierge to trigger for you. For example, uh, customers would onboard themselves uh, during the pandemic, but then they would need a plastic card or a virtual card to do e-commerce transactions or access cash. And so, you know, in a lockdown, you go online, tell the bot, I need a debit card and the card will be couriered to your house. And we activated self-service card control. So you would, when you receive the card, you'd activate it on the app, put in the limits that you want, or deactivate it for you know, cash and just use it for online purchases. Um, so that was uh, you know, the start of what we called you know, uh, bot crowdsourcing of ideas because what they would ask the coin share to do would now be ideation for service to be integrated into the experience layer. Um, and what we thought was going to be the, the most requested service, which, would, which we've offered at the start of the lockdowns, was cash delivery. Uh, we found was not going to be the, the hot topic or hot item because people shifted to digital payments. So, uh, you know, by not going in on certain transactions we thought were going to be needed, uh, but instead sourcing, doing the ideation via by this concierge service, we were able to uh, be more reactive to the customer needs. Uh, and it can be as, you know, as uh, trivial as uh, controlling the, the look. 
So if it's raining, the app will show an umbrella and tell you to uh, be careful when you leave the house. Now it's it's Christmassy, so there you know there's a Christmas tree or something on the on the app uh, when you log in. So you know the the agility uh, to you know be in control of what the customer sees and touches. Uh, I think uh, engages them more, gives them a sense that we are looking out for them rather than you know an invisible entity that's holding their funds. Um, and I think it has increased the, the interaction to the point where we're seeing a drop off in voice uh, and even uh, direct messages. Because once you increase what you support in terms of customer needs, uh, they will find less and less uh, of their time wasted talking to a banker. Lovely. And, you know, I really lo loved uh, what you mentioned about bot crowdsourcing and the concierge services, plus uh, contextualizing uh, things like the umbrella, the Christmas festive season, and all of this uh, <clears throat> makes for a very strong experience that the customers are having. Uh, appreciate your insight, John. Uh, very useful if technology can work closely with the context that uh, the customers are approaching us for, right? Uh, in the, uh, if I may ask, how is the bank in Indonesia uh, working around uh, some of these areas? And what are the examples that you think have worked well uh, from what you're doing uh, with your customer experience part in the bank? Okay, thank you, Anurag. Uh, you know, since uh, BTN, our company is uh, known as a mortgage bank in Indonesia, uh, we are the market leaders uh, of uh, mortgage in Indonesia. So uh, I will answer the question, uh, jump into uh, one of the use cases uh, that we have uh, developed and we have implemented uh, a chatbot in our, our business in terms of uh, debt collection methodology. Okay. Uh, we are using a uh, chatbot uh, for uh, customer interaction. For example, first, uh, before the due date, until uh, minus seven days before the due date, uh, we are using chatbot to gently remind uh, customer to make payment on time. It's a gently reminder. So, and then uh, for the late, uh, for one or until three days, the chatbot outbound call for early gentle reminder. For the customer and then for the customer who is late for around seven to ten days now uh, the top bot utilizing our m m0 prediction model to classify common and complicated cases this, uh, this is uh, uh, what we do uh, in our top board and for uh, m uh, m1 until m3 uh, top bot contact customers first and label is customer we are using a uh, debt collection sensitivity, sensitivity analysis model for, uh, to classify sensitive case, cases, common cases and difficult cases. And uh, uh, by doing this, uh, uh, if, uh, if, it's, if it's necessary, uh, the, the, top, uh, the top board will forward to agent if required for any complex cases. So by doing all of this, uh, we have some, some benefits uh, that uh, we, we get from the, the process that we can in increase uh, coverage through multiple rounds of outbound calls, of course. And of course, increase successful rate, yeah, uh, with three times of work, uh, workload each line compared to, to agent. And we can conduct the collection calls face by face and without impacts of human emotions that we have already implemented uh, this uh, top board in our business. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Indra. And, um... I actually quite got interested in your in the comment about uh, using predictive model to find out the complexity and contextualizing uh, the customer why the payment has been missed and what can be done about it. I think <clears throat> these are real situations uh, usually uh, in the past uh, much more better understood with uh, human interaction and technology is getting better at it and the combination is definitely helping uh, serve customers better so thanks for bringing this uh, point for the audience 
Now, if I may, uh, you know, uh, move on to the next question, which uh, is uh, for all the panelists, and we can start with uh, Selvi, uh, you. Uh, if I may ask what drives customer satisfaction um, uh, at a strategic journey and interaction level, and how are you measuring it uh, in your current organization? Yeah, thanks, Anurag. So basically, you know, whatever that we're trying to do, you know what, you no, know, there's constantly there's this say what what gets measured, that gets done. So what we try to do is ensure that try find a way how we want to measure our customer experience. So there's few parameters that typically we look at, or a few measurements that we look at. We have got you know some organizations use this term called NPS, Net Promoter Score. Uh, we also have got this customer ex uh, experience or customer satisfaction index that we use to measure customer uh, happiness or satisfaction in the way they're interacting with us. We also have call center satisfaction in terms of measuring uh, the satisfaction of interaction between our call center with the customers, as well as the turnaround time that we use. Now, typically, um, customer want us to um, interact with them as soon as possible, respond to them as soon as possible, uh, satisfactorily as well. So these are some of the measurements that typically we, we have uh, that we use to measure um, customer happiness and, uh, and satisfaction and also to see if there is there any shift in customer expectation or customer satisfaction as we move forward um, in our day-to-day -day operations. Thanks, Alvi. John, how does uh, you know, your organization uh, view some of these and measure it? Well, thank you, Selvi, for mentioning all of them <laughs> for me. <laughs> yeah. I realize a lot of them would be very common. Uh, made my made, made my uh, response very very fast, but yeah, so uh, seriously. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, one one interesting measure that we suddenly revisited was the app rating score, uh, because you know the traditional measures that Selvi talked about were always uh, what we used to measure. But uh, when we saw an uptick in the use of the mobile uh, channel, uh, we suddenly started tracking the, the app reviews on the stores, uh, App Store, Google Play Store, etc., etc. And, you know, our, my people spent a lot of time doing all the correlation the analytics and everything. And what we found was cultural. If they're happy, they will not give you a great rating. Uh, but a disgruntled uh, customer will be very, very uh, passionate about the rating. And when you, when you analyze why the ratings are bad, um, it's not because the app wasn't working. It's because um, uh, out of frustration, uh, they felt more the app failed them because the app couldn't anticipate what they wanted. For example, I would, we would get ratings, like one-star ratings, because people forgot their passwords. Um, and uh, you know when when you, there's a forgot password button uh, that they overlook, uh, it's suddenly the app's fault. For example, um, and uh, you know your app works because doesn't work because I can't log in. Is the is the review, uh, and so uh, that was an interesting insight. You know, uh, how do you now capture the happy customer insight when they are not going to be passionate enough? To give you that five-star review, um, whereas you know a frustrated customer will give you a one-star review, but not give you the insight of why he was not happy. Um, so I think that was the interesting insight recently uh, uh, of a non-traditional customer metric that we suddenly started to track. Interesting. I think uh, <clears throat> customers today are much more savvy, uh, and there's a lot more uh, options they have. Uh, which possibly is also driving some of this behavior. But most importantly, we kind of have to figure out, you know, where are the touch points that are anticipated, which is also a challenge for people like us uh, <laughs> running some of this. And it's a good challenge to have because it kind of makes us creative think uh, you know, proactively how customers are going to respond. Uh, thanks, and, and it was Yeah, and what was interesting there I forgot to mention was... Uh, Probably half of the people who give you a poor rating because they're frustrated with the app 
do not have the personality the, to call you or reach out to you. Mm -hmm. uh, meaning they expected everything to be completely self-service without a human interaction. Yeah. Uh, and so that now becomes a challenge. How do you now, you know, get entice them, which is the reverse of what we were talking about earlier, right? Uh, to, to give that human interaction. Uh, because, they, you know, either they're antisocial, they're shy, uh, and they will not give you that insight. Yeah. I think it's also a factor of uh, <clears throat> more and more customers in the current generation are younger folks who are actually very comfortable with technology. And <clears throat> they might have some great ideas of how technology can work for them better. Uh, if, and our job is to listen and evolve as we go more out. Indra, what are your thoughts on uh, this topic? How does it work for you? Yes, Anurag, it's getting harder to answer the question because uh, Selfie and John has already covered it all. Uh, so, uh, what is it? Maybe I will uh, share about the, uh, uh, the use cases that I mentioned before that our talk about uh, how we implement it. Uh, of course, we have to measure uh, all the process. Uh, we have to evaluate whether it's work or not. And uh, in terms of our talk bots, uh, we are designed the, based on the conversations of our best agents. So uh, by, and then uh, we, we do this uh, survey and research for the customers and uh, they acting like a real agent with natural conversation talk. And one of the, uh, the result is uh, from our, our research that 95% of customers didn't know they were speaking to a top board. So this one is one of uh, our, our achievement that, uh, yes, uh, in, in terms of uh, we have to make a happy customer for sure, but uh, the technology or the, the AI or the top board they, they, they we have implemented, we have to make sure that uh, it, uh, it fulfills our requirement. And one of the things that uh, we, we have already succeeded that 95% of our uh, customers didn't know that uh, they were speaking to a top board. That's a one of achievement. Interesting. I think we are about four minutes and let me quickly, uh, you know, uh, very shortly if we can answer uh, one last question which may be relevant to some of our listeners. Uh, and that is what key skills and methods, uh, you know, uh, are important for designing a self-service customer journey and what should career experience people who are listening to the call upskill for uh, to work in this industry if you can get some brief responses uh, starting off uh, john if you can pitch in um an interesting uh, I, I think insight we had because we we are an ecosystem bank and the primary ecosystems we service are retail uh, is that we uh, uh, took advantage of uh, insights and expertise from FMCG, fast moving consumer goods, uh, and uh, retail uh, uh, business because uh, you know it's it's very very uh, experience laden in terms of how, how they approach product development customer service. Uh, traditionally, the FSIs have been very clinical in how we approach uh, the customer experience. And once you do a mass market play uh, for FSIs, uh, the insights from FMCG, I think, uh, helped us uh, uh, adjust uh, very well. Nice. Anything to add to that, uh, Selvi? Yeah, yeah. I think specifically, uh, it would be we will need individuals that have got the strong design thinking capability, right? Uh, so that's able to look at, uh, understand customer experience, customer wants and all that, as well as uh, someone who has got a process knowledge, right? So that then they will be able to marry between the customer expectation as well as this process uh, capability within the organization. So they will have a more seamless uh, process. Thanks, Elvi. Indra, uh, what about uh, your inputs? Anything else that the team should add up? Okay, uh, I may I may uh, answer the question by uh, what are the key elements to adopt uh, AI? Or uh, since uh, we we know that uh, self service uh, will always use uh, AI for the technology, so uh, we found that there are five key elements that uh, we have to prepare the companies to ha have to prepare to adopt this AI. First, that we have to 
uh, clearly defined use cases or sources of failing. And then uh, one of the reasons is uh, uh, maybe uh, I can say that a lot of uh, business have already adopted AI for uh, self-service, but uh, some are still falling to grasp the, benef the benefits of investment in AI capability in their contact centers. So uh, one of the reasons is because they don't have clear use cases. All so right. This so one, the, uh, the, yeah, Indra, I think yeah. we are almost top of the hour. So, uh, you know, I think uh, if I were to just summarize uh, uh, the panel discussion here very quickly, uh, uh, banks and financial sector companies and others need to architect a holistic journey, right? Uh, Self-service is a lever which fails when understanding is in the pocket. So I can think of the 10 blind men and an elephant version of uh, different uh, if parts of the organization trying to solve this problem, but when all of it come together uh, uh, from a customer point of view, uh, the experiences and the journey can be exciting and it can become a very powerful differentiation for uh, uh, banks, right? So with that, uh, I, I would like to thank uh, my pan panelists, Indra, uh, John, Selvi for joining us uh, and you know giving insights to the rest of Asia. Jed, over to you. All right. Thank you, Anirag, for uh, moderating that great panel. Thank you to Indra, John, and Selvi for giving uh, us great insights onto the topic. Uh, so that is a wrap for our discussion and also for our self-service solutions track. See you all on the next one. Thanks again, right. everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Good morning.